Last week I added some decorations and animations to the game to kind of fill up the empty void that was the game. And then I added some color, which made the game actually kind of appealing to look at. Which makes this poor little guy really ugly in comparison. <laughs> like, I made him in maybe five minutes. So this poor little guy needs a makeover, and I'm going to add some enemies to the game. But in case you don't know who I am, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. Let's get into the video. So I started by creating a test room to work in the game, which was just copying the main game into a separate scene, and stopping the train so I wasn't being pressured to move around while I was trying to watch enemies act. I figured I'd start with spiders because, you know, every game needs obligatory giant spiders. So I figured these guys would just walk around the level, and when they walk into a wall, turn around and go back. And if the floor is gone beneath them, they'll fall down. So that way the spiders kind of have a tendency to fall down on top of the player. Which, personally, as someone who is slightly arachnophobic, the idea of a giant spider falling on my head... Oh, oh, no. <laughs> so I started like I always do, which is just grabbing the prototyping tools, throwing the squares up there, and adding controls. All I did with these guys was give them the built-in GDevelop platforming controls, and then remove the controls from the game, and control them using events instead of actual button presses. And this is very, very straightforward. You use an object variable to make different states for the character. So with the spider, if its object variable for state is zero, it'll go to the right. And then if its object state is one, it'll go to the left. And if it's going to the right and runs into a wall, then its object variables will switch to the other one and go to the left. And that's it. Very simple. Nothing crazy. And I figured the spiders will be the only kind of enemy in the game that can hurt the player. And I designed them to look like this after a few different iterations. And I designed them originally with a glow effect because I want the player to be able to see them at all times so they're not going to just get surprised by them suddenly. Now this completely ruined the way the game was supposed to look. So I had to come up with something else. And I did. I decided that the eyes of the spider were going to glow orange. And that way, just like the fuse for the bomb, when there's no light on it, you'll still be able to see them. And this is what they look like. And I showed this off to the Discord saying it was a first draft, despite being pretty happy with it. And somebody came back and told me that my spiders looked like ants. And as soon as they said that, I couldn't get the image out of my head. So I had to go back and do it again. And by go back and do it again, I just mean rework it a little bit. So the legs of the spiders were moving in sync. And so I took them all and, and spread them out into different layers, so they're all moving independently now. And on top of that, the body is skinnier, and the back end of the spider is bigger now. And while it's not a huge change, it changed it enough that I no longer saw it as an ant. And I'm pretty happy with how the spiders look, actually. It creates this nice effect where when the spider walks away, all you can see is the eyes, and when they walk back, you can see the spider. And that should hopefully warn the player enough that they're not going to feel cheated when they get attacked and killed, because they had plenty of warning that it was there. Now that the spider is done, it's time to go work on that ghost. The first draft of the ghost update, I was still kind of stuck in the mindset that the ghost was going to be this white thing, but I figured it should be carrying some ice, because the function of the ghost is that when it hits the train, it reduces the amount of coal in the furnace, or the heat in the furnace, I guess. And so if you see a ghost coming towards your train, that is powered by a furnace, or a boiler, and is carrying ice, that should tell you right away that he's going to come attack your furnace. So that should indicate to the player, before the ghost even hits the train, that that's what's happening. Now while I thought this was a better ghost, all in all, especially now that the ghost orients itself towards the train, but after sharing it, I just... it could be better. So, I figured I'd try to make it better. I decided the ghost itself should be like the rest of the enemies in the game, and just be black. After talking to some people on Discord, I decided that the ghost should be carrying a bigger chunk of ice, and then once I thought of that, I immediately decided that the chunk of ice is going to be comically too large for the ghost. So you're going to have this cute tiny ghost with this giant chunk of ice. And for a prototype that I made once, I made this crystal artwork, 
So I figured for the block of ice I would go reference that. Just to like get it to look better than it was. And I was originally grabbing the colors from the art palette that I'd chosen. But I... I just... I couldn't hold back the urge. And so I went and picked my own colors, like I always do. I'm a little bit sad at myself that I wasn't able to stick to a color palette, but at the same time... This definitely looks better than before. It's not gonna match the rest of the colors in the game, but I'm happy with how that looks. The ghost has a little waggling tail effect and he readjusts the weight of the ice as he floats towards the train, and I think that's pretty cute. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is. It took a little work to get the lighting to link to the sprite as they came out, so the ghosts and lighting when they spawned are separate so that the lighting can be behind everything so it can light everything up, but the ghost can be in front of everything, so it's not going to be obstructed by things in the scene. When it was done, it looked like this. Which I'm actually really happy with, like that's, that's pretty good. Considering I'm not an artist, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's two enemies down. The week was kind of cutting short, so I figured I'd make one more, and then call it a week. In my Discord we've been talking about types of enemies, and essentially, each one should be doing something different to attack the resources you have at your disposal. So the ghost attacks the train, the spider attacks you, and now I want to make two other enemies. One that takes food from your train, and one that attacks the sanity of your family. So the one that attacks the sanity of your family will be this devilish horror-esque character, I guess? But the one that steals food, I decided was going to be another cute enemy. So I created some kind of like eel thing that I figured would get kind of fat as it was leaving the scene when it took the food. And as it's going towards the scene, it's kind of sneaking up to you. So I created a spawner just outside of scene that when the timing bars tick and pick for the spawner to create the enemy, he'll come into game, go straight for the train, and if it manages to get to the train, it'll collide with it and change its state to being full. And then turn around and go back. But I didn't just want it to show up and take the food and leave and then you just get cheated. So I plan to also give the player the ability to run down and chase off this enemy. So this enemy gets four states instead of the spider's two. It gets walking to the train, walking back, being scared, and then running away. But when I tried to implement the getting scared one, this happened. Yeah, it's not supposed to be so hungry that it decides to break the code and moonwalk past you to get the food and then moonwalk out of there. I didn't think it was going to be that hungry. <laughs> so what I did wrong was, when it's supposed to turn around and run away, instead of changing the animation, I had ended up changing the variable. So it changed its state back to zero, which is running towards the train again. So he flipped and then ran towards the train and then ran back, instead of flipping and running away. Which was a quick fix, but I honestly lost a lot of sleep over it because I couldn't figure it out because well, doing game dev at 2 in the morning is just a bad idea. So I have a lot more to do with the game. I think I'm sort of starting to slowly realize how big this game is going to be. It's only going to be two scenes, the train and the city, but somehow amongst all of the things I have planned for it, including like food mechanics and sanity and trading mechanics and upgrades and a story and a narrator, like, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's dawning on me how much more is left to go. But next week I'm planning on getting some things done, including finalizing these changes and getting it working in the actual game with the train moving, creating a spider spawner, and then creating this fourth enemy type, which will attack sanity. This week I essentially cemented the fact that this game is going to be a spoopy game. So sort of scary, sort of cute game. I mean, I kind of had to do that because, firstly, that, that might just be more appealing to people to play. But also, I had decided that the story's narrator is going to be their sarcastic cat who's trapped in a torch. So I don't think I could effectively make that back into a horror game after making that decision. So it's going to be spoopy. Spoopy. Anyhow, if you like this week's devlog, maybe consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to talk to me personally, you can click on the link down below to come to our Discord called the Game Dev Fireside. It's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk about game dev, and life, and things, I guess. And if you decide to click on that link, then I will see you there. <laughs>